Welcome back to the Kennedy Dynasty Podcast. I'm your host, Allison, and today I am delighted to share a conversation I was honored to have with Clint Hill and his wife and co-author, Lisa McCubbin Hill. As many of us already know, Clint Hill is a retired U.S. Secret Service agent. During the Kennedy administration, he was assigned to protect Mrs. Kennedy and was in the motorcade in Dallas on November 22, 1963, when President John F. Kennedy was tragically assassinated. He served Presidents Eisenhower, Kennedy, Johnson, Nixon, and Ford. He's also a best-selling author. Lisa McCubbin Hill is an award-winning journalist and the author of four New York Times best-selling books. In addition to her book, Betty Ford, she co-authored three bestsellers with Mr. Hill, Five Presidents, Five Days in November, and Mrs. Kennedy and Me. Together, they just released their newest one, My Travels with Mrs. Kennedy, and I hope you enjoy our conversation about this beautiful book. Here I am joined by the authors of My Travels with Mrs. Kennedy, Clint Hill and Lisa McCubbin Hill. Thank you both so much for joining me today. Our pleasure. Nice to see you, Allison. Yes, nice to see you. Thank you so much. I want to note before we get started, because I just have to, I'm truly honored that you're on the podcast because I've studied the Kennedys for many years. And Mrs. Kennedy and Me is one of my absolute favorite books of all time. And I read it a long time before this podcast. And I think it's really a part of what inspired me to want to share their history and legacy with other people. So I'm just very appreciative of your time and your work. Well, thank you. That was 10 years ago we did Mrs. Kennedy and Me. That was our first book together. Yeah. It's so oh. good. It's so good. And this is just such a great addition to that continuation of that story. Um, I really enjoyed this book and how you told the modern story of discovering these pieces of your life while sorting through your home. And then you combined it with the flashback memories that the items brought back. And I also loved seeing the collaboration and conversation between you both and your relationship. So please take me through how the idea of this book came to be and how the collaboration process works when you both write together. Well, we, we had been looking for a project to to work on, and uh, this was back in 2019, before COVID. And uh, we just happened to find this uh, trunk in my garage that we were going searching to dispose of things so I could sell the house. And uh, in going through it, it uh, brought back many, many memories, mostly good. And I don't think we really thought at that time no. about this being a movie, although you did have me. You said movie. Ooh. Not movie, I mean, whatever. <laughs> <I'm good. laughs> uh, although uh, you had me use your phone and take a video of you opening the trunk. Exactly, I did. So, I mean, there was some forethought there, maybe on your part. Well, I think so. So, yeah, the book opens up with um, I mean, it's all a true story and it opens up in 2019 when we were clearing out Clint's house in Alexandria, Virginia, that he had owned for 50 years. And there was just more than 50 years and 50 years of stuff in there, um, which, you know, he thought he had gotten everything out that was important. And I said, well, let's you know, there are a few things still that were he hadn't been able to find. So I said, well, this is our chance to find it. So, so we did all that. I took a lot of photos with totally was not thinking about writing a book at that time. And then we were in lockdown during COVID, you know, that COVID mm-hmm. lockdown in 2020. And now we're, we're living in California and um, it was kind of like, you know, here we were just the two of us and we're not big TV watchers. And um, so we kind of needed a project. And the original idea was to to um, curate a lot of photographs, because that's one of the things I've loved about these processes is finding all these wonderful photographs of Jackie Kennedy. And in going through his memorabilia, we found some unseen photos that had never been published before. So that was kind of it is we wanted to make sort of a coffee table book um, of photographs with little anecdotes along with it. And it morphed into even more than that. Yeah. It's so good. It's so wonderful. Long-winded answer. (laughs) No, it's perfect answer. (laughs) Mr. Hill, I love the fact that you were so upset to be assigned to Mrs. Kennedy, and she was also so not excited about Secret Service, but then you end up just developing this beautiful relationship and bond with each other. How long did it take for you to earn this trust of hers? Well, it started out very slow, (laughs) Uh, but we were tossed together because she was pregnant. There There was a limited amount of stuff she could do. 
And because I was one of two agents assigned to her, and I was the one that was working with her most of the time when she was doing things, uh, it just developed gradually over the months, weeks, years, until it got to the point, I guess, the, the top would have been about 1962, when uh, she was going to take Caroline to Italy to vacation with her sister Lee and Lee's husband, Stash Radziwill, and their children. And uh, usually when you travel with the First Lady, there's the First Lady's Press Secretary, the First Lady's Social Secretary, the First Lady's this, that, whatever. On this occasion, there was a First Lady's personal assistant, Providence Brady's, and I became the press secretary, social secretary, <laughs> diplomatic corps, <laughs> call, all the other things. And I realized then that uh, she really did trust me implicitly with everything that she needed. So that was a kind of a wonderful thing to, to realize at that time. Absolutely. It's, and it's such a fun process to read of these trips and all the things that she would have you do that you're like, well, I guess I'll handle it. <laughs> I love that yeah, so yeah, much. You know, and I, the one thing I had I convinced everybody is anything that I did for her had to be related to security in mm -hmm. some way. And I stuck to that all the way through our relationship. Like it. shopping for her on the island of Capri. Yeah, I didn't want her to go <laughs> shopping amongst all that the That makes crowds. sense. Yeah, it makes yeah, sense. I, I didn't actually go pick out, oh, she was doing <laughs> that. I had a very talented princess with me <laughs> whose job was to pick out the things she wanted. She thought that she would look good. At, so. But let me tell you, Clint has impeccable taste when it comes to fashion. And he is very good at helping me pick out clothes. And we've had instances where I've been in a, a shop for hours and he patiently sits there as I try things on and he'll say, yep, buy that. Nope, that doesn't look good. Try this, try that. And um, he's I think he got that from those early years with Mrs. Kennedy and her sense of classic style. Mr. Hill, I need you to teach my husband that, <laughs> please. <laughs> that would be so helpful. <laughs> Lisa, it was also so much fun to read your excitement when finding these items, because I mean, I'm such a softie. I can't go through the Smithsonian without tearing up a little bit, just looking at artifacts. So to see your excitement of holding these pieces of history in your hand was so much fun to read. I have to know, for each of you, what was your favorite item that you came across while cleaning out the house? There. For me? Yeah. Oh, I suppose some of the autographed pictures would be the three favorite things because they're very, very personal. Yeah, I think for me, probably what was most exciting was the sketchbook. Oh, um, yes. That um, she had had with her on On Onassis's yacht in 1963. And in the book, we tell about how Clint ended up with it. And it was really just the remnants of, you know, her, her sketches, her doodles that she had done, lists of furniture that she wanted to <clears throat> move to their new house in, um, in the, they called it Wexford in Middleburg, Virginia. And so it was, you know, all her handwriting and you could see what she was thinking about while she was on this yacht in the Mediterranean. It was after uh, the death of their baby, Patrick, and it was just weeks before her husband would be assassinated. So it was, that was really special to me. To, I, I felt like I got a sense of her and just seeing her, you know, dabbles with the paint and how she would try to find the right color for the sea. And, you know, I've, I've been to Greece and the Mediterranean and, and the colors there are just so magnificent. And I felt like I was sort of, um, I could, I could see what she was trying to do. And that was a really special thing to find. That's so neat. I love that. Um, Mr. Hill, you opened up a lot in this book about 1964, and I really appreciated your honesty there and what was such a dark, hard time in your life. What made you decide that now was the time to share those moments? Well, I suppose it deals back to the fact that I had uh, refused to discuss 
anything about the assassination for years and then meeting Lisa and realizing that there's someone here, someone I can really talk to and rely on. That uh, and knowing that over the years since that time, it, it's helped me to talk about it and do so in public. I guess I I thought that uh, this is a real dark day in my life, and uh, maybe if I disclose it, talk about it, it'll be better. So that's really why. Absolutely. It was really neat to see your relationship and bond in this book too. I know I said that a little bit earlier, but I loved seeing a lot about Lisa as well and your camaraderie and your communication together. I thought that was really sweet to read. So I loved that part of the book. So you traveled to some amazing places, of course. Out of all the places, what was your favorite place to visit? And Lisa, which trip was your favorite to hear about? Well, my favorite would probably be Ravello and Amalfi Coast in Italy because it was so relaxing and carefree and fun. Uh, and Mrs. Kennedy and Caroline had a wonderful time as did everybody else that was there. And uh, so that'd probably be, you know, every place we went was a, a new challenge and, uh, and it was interesting, uh, some more so than others. But I mean, uh, this was very personal, the trip to Italy. For, I, those are my favorite stories and photographs. I mean, we could have had a hundred photographs from Ravello. It was so hard to choose which ones to put in um, <clears throat> because we found so many new photographs and it, it really tells the personal side of this um, vacation that she went on in August of 1962 when that was when Clint was, you know, the only person there uh, except for her assistant and some other agents <clears throat> that he had brought along. But um, the other the other trip that I loved is um, to India and Pakistan, because <clears throat> just, you know, realizing sort of the state of affairs we're in right now in the world and to look back at how how beloved America was back in 1962 when they went to India and Pakistan and Mrs. Kennedy riding through the streets of Pakistan in an open top convertible with the president of Pakistan, Ayub Khan, and thousands of women coming out to see her because, which was very, very unusual. The last time Clint had been there was with President Eisenhower, and there were only men lining the streets because women, you know, had to sort of stay home and stay covered. But Mrs. Kennedy was there, and this brought women out, and it gave them inspiration to see a woman being honored in this way. And um, I don't know, I just thought that was really fascinating. Mrs. Kennedy has always just been incredibly inspiring to me. My audience knows I go on and on about her. I just love her so much. She's just so much more than the fashion icon that she's typically labeled as. She was that, but she's also so deep and witty and intelligent. And I think you both have flawlessly showed that about her in your books. So from this book, what do you want people to learn and take away from when they read it? Well, I want them to realize how down to earth she was, too. Mm -hmm. There's some photos in the book of her out in Middleburg in a raincoat and in galoshes leading a pony, macaroni, with Caroline on it when she was just about, well, let's see, she was born in 57. This would have been about four or five years old. And, and just participating in events in behalf of her daughter that other people that lived in the area were just participating. Nobody bothered her. She, I mean, it was just wonderful to, to witness, to realize, and have her realize that she was just like they were. She loved her daughter and wanted the best for her, and that's what the rest of them did, too. So that was uh, something I don't think anybody ever really recognized until you see those pictures, and you realize she was really down to earth. And those are some of the photos that um, we were fortunate enough to find. And um, the photographer's daughters allowed us to use these photographs, um, which have only been published in a small book once before. And so the world is now going to get to see these behind the scenes photo of, of really what a wonderful mother Mrs. Kennedy was. 
Yes, that's so wonderful. This book is truly beautiful in every way. I did see so many photos I had never seen before. So everyone go purchase My Travels with Mrs. Kennedy now by clicking the link in the description of this episode. Thank you both again so, so much for joining me. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Thanks for listening. If you like the podcast, please rate it five stars and write a positive written review. Check out all the links in the descriptions of this episode, and I will talk to you guys next week. Come on and vote for Kennedy, vote for Kennedy, to keep America strong. Kennedy, he just keeps rolling.